How's it going everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going over the 3 fastest ways to earn PvP XP and Azos Salt in New World, so you can level up your PvP tracks and start unlocking some of the PvP track artifacts. But first, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel, it helps out massively. Now, let's get into it. Since artifacts have been put into New World, they have become a very major impact on people's builds and playstyles. Unfortunately though, a lot of these great artifacts are locked behind the PvP track, so we all find ourselves grinding out PvP levels, even if we aren't PvP enthusiasts, just to get the item we need to complete our builds. So for this video, I decided to go in and try out all the current ways people are leveling their PvP tracks quickly, and then calculate which are the most effective in terms of PvP XP per hour and Azos Salt earned per hour, so you can look at the numbers and decide on which method is best for you. And don't worry, this method's in there for those of you who love the PvP game modes, and those of you who are trying to avoid any kind of PvP interactions. Now, let's get started. The first method we're going to be looking at is grinding 3v3 arenas. For winning a 3v3 arena, you're rewarded with 2,500 PvP XP and 1,350 Azos Salt. Plus, you can get a reward cache, but they usually give you junk anyways. Losing a match will give you 500 PvP XP and 350 Azos Salt. Now, to test this method and get my hourly numbers, I did a total of 5 matches, queuing in solo. The fastest match completed was 3 minutes and 40 seconds, with the longest match lasting 8 minutes and 40 seconds. The average of all the matches was 5 minutes and 40 seconds, so that means I can get in roughly 11 games per hour. To keep the numbers even across all methods, I'll assume you win 50% of your matches, but if you're really good and get a good group together, these numbers can go up significantly. That means by spamming 3v3 arenas for a whole hour, with 5.5 wins and 5.5 losses, you can expect to be making 16,500 PvP XP and 9,350 Azos Salt per hour. Not bad, but let's see if the other methods can beat those numbers. Next up, we got a method that's for those of you who don't really want to PvP against others, but still want to get your tracks leveled up to get some of those PvP track artifacts, and that's the PvP missions method. Particularly, doing PvP missions in Great Cleave, because they reward well, always give you the same 3 missions, and are always really near one another. So a full set of 3 PvP missions will reward you with 1050 PvP XP, 600 Azos Salt, and 20 Gold. On average, I get a set of these done in 4 minutes and 20 seconds. That means I can get roughly 14 sets of these PvP missions in per hour, netting me 14,700 PvP XP, 8,400 Azos Salt, and 280 Gold per hour. That's just about the same amount as doing 3v3 arenas, but without all of the PvP action. Of course, if you're really good at 3v3s and have a good team, those numbers can change drastically, but for the average solo player, you can expect a similar return from both these methods. Now, if you're new to the Great Cleave missions, I'll go over quickly what you need to do for these missions, as well as give you a couple tips and tricks for efficiency to keep your runs going smoothly. For starters, you get three missions all in a small area of one another. One requires you to be in a zone for a minute and a half, and usually by the time you're getting done with the other two missions, that time is up. The other requires you to grab a box from one spot and deliver it to another, and the last one wants you to loot 5 chests in a certain area. Depending on your faction, the drop off location for the box will be different, but they're all still close by. So once I have all 3 quests gotten, I head to the pickup spot first and grab the box. You'll notice that during the ride there, the countdown timer will eventually start ticking down for the second mission, and once I have the box, I go over and loot the 5 chests for the third quest. If you do these sets of missions back to back, you can still loot any of the chests you looted on the previous run, there will be no chest countdown timer to slow you down. Once that's done, I head over to the drop off location. Usually as I'm running there, the last few seconds from the hold mission finish off, but if you still have a bit longer, you can just sit around in the area until the quest is complete. From there, just head back to town, drop off all the missions, and repeat the process. It can get a bit dull, but if you throw on a podcast or some TV, you can passively grind those PvP tracks out. I'm in a highly populated server, with people all over this area, and most of the time, if I see an enemy player, we just walk past each other and keep doing our own thing, because we're both just grinding out PvP missions. But sometimes you run into those players that want to take you out and make you lose your progress. Just in case that happens, I like to have two good escape weapons equipped, like the Great Axe, Fire Staff, or Rapier. And then, I have the Mount Strap on that allows me to spawn my mount faster, the one you get from the mount quests. So when I make distance from my attacker, I just weave around objects if they're ranged players, or just keep distance if they're melee players until I can spawn my mount and just dash off. I'd say 95% of the time I get attacked, I get away, unless it's multiple people ganking me, but that's yet to happen. Another thing to know about this method is that there's been a glitch in the game for ages 
when first getting these quests that only two quests show up. To get around this, just accept both quests, then wait for the 5 minute quest reset timer to run down, and go back to the quest quiver to accept the third quest. You can do a set of two quests while you wait if you really want to, but I usually use the time to get other things done before getting into my questing routine. But don't worry, when you turn in your first set of three quests, you can immediately accept another three, as long as it's been five minutes since you started your run. This glitch doesn't happen again, that would slow down your grind speed significantly. Also, if you want to sacrifice a bit of PvP XP for some more gold and skill level increases, you can gather the resource nodes in this area as you're running your routes. You'll see on screen some of the good resources around this area. I tend to get lots of lodestones, gold ore, and weirdwood while doing these runs when I'm not going for speed. Plus the aptitude levels from doing these skills nets me some nice profits as well. And finally, we have our last method in grinding out outpost rush matches. Currently, for winning an OPR match, you can get two tiers of rewards depending on how you score. If you are below 501 points, you will get nothing but being over 501 points will get you 1,500 PvP XP, 1,000 Azoth Salt, 900 Faction Tokens and XP, 125 Azoth, and 180 Gold. If you perform even better in a win and get over 3,000 points, you'll be getting a whopping 2,500 PvP XP, 2,000 Azoth Salt, 1,280 Faction Tokens and XP, 250 Azoth, and 360 Gold. Plus there's a chance of getting 16 Dark Matter with every win you participate in. To keep track of your points, just hit the end key to bring up the leaderboards in a match. It's really easy to get over 3000 points unless it's a steamroll victory or defeat that ends in less than 10 minutes. Now when it comes to a loss, the point threshold still applies, so under 501 points is nothing, with over 501 points giving you 500 PvP XP, 0 Azoth Salt, 800 Faction Tokens and XP, 125 Azoth, and 180 gold. If you contributed well and got over 3000 points, your reward will be bumped up to 2000 PvP XP, 1000 Azoth Salt, 900 Faction Tokens and XP, 175 Azoth, and 270 gold. Plus losses give you a chance at 4 Dark Matter. Now when it comes to the time it takes to complete a match, the quickest I got a match done in during my test runs was 8 minutes and 56 seconds, but that was a complete steamroll victory with no opposition. The longest the match took was 31 minutes and 42 seconds, with the average of all matches being 21 minutes long. That means I could get in roughly 3 matches per hour. It's very easy to get over 3000 contribution points per match, so I'll be basing the numbers on if you do so for every match. If you're good at PvP, this should not be a problem, and even if you're not good at PvP, and you're more of a PvE player, and want to avoid PvP and OPRs, I'll link you a video I made on how to OPR as a PvE player in the top right of this video and in the video description. If you follow those tips, you should easily get 3000 contribution points per match. With the 50% win ratio, you can expect to be getting 6750 PvP XP, 4500 Azoth Salt, 3270 Faction Tokens and XP, 637.5 Azoth, and 945 Gold per hour. Plus you can get up to 27 Dark Matter per hour as well. You will also be getting OPR reward caches during these grinds, which can sometimes give you some pretty nice gear or salvageable gear for bonus dark matter. You can see what I got for my caches on screen now. Overall, I'd say it's a lot slower of a method than the previous two when it comes to PvP XP and salt, but it gives you a larger pool of rewards, and the dark matter is always nice. Plus, if you were in an OPR company and ran these matches with an organized group of good players, that could up your win percentage and match speeds, improving these numbers significantly. As a bonus method, that's not very consistent anymore, but can be worth adding into your grinds for whenever you need a break, is sitting AFK on faction points. I made a video about it a while back, which will be linked in the top right and in the video description, so if you'd like to see me go a bit more in depth with this method, and give you all the tips and tricks I use, check out that video. But in short, whenever I need a break, or have other things I need to get done, I just head over to any faction control point and sit on an AFK while doing my other things. Sometimes someone will come and kill me, but a lot of times I actually manage to capture the spot, especially if it's one of the less visited zones, and at a time when not too many people are logged on. Or, if an influence race is on, these points are usually left alone. Solo capping one of these points takes roughly 15 minutes, but rewards you with 1100 PvP XP and 300 Azoth Salt. So if you got extremely lucky and never got killed in an hour, while taking roughly 5 minutes of travel time to each faction point, you can be getting 3 points per hour for 3300 PvP XP and 900 Azoth Salt. Those aren't incredible numbers, especially when you look at the other methods, but it does add up, and you're AFK anyways, so might as well try. It's worth noting though, after capturing 10 control points in a day, the rewards go down significantly. 
following the same kind of theme as AFK PvP XP, there's also influence races. I've done a couple now, and doing a full 45 minute race hasn't been anywhere near as rewarding as the other methods for me, but just going into the zone and putting a bit of damage on some players before going off and doing your own thing is really worth it in my opinion, because that'll make the game think you participated in the race, and once the race is over, you'll be getting a rewards cache, 1000 PvP XP, 500 Azos Salt, and 5000 Faction Tokens. That's just for hitting an enemy with a couple of attacks. Now, there's only 3 of these a day, but it's an easy 3k XP for basically nothing, so it could be worth adding into your daily routine. Another thing to note is that in my server, my faction is severely outnumbered, so we never win these races. Plus we have no organization. If you were in a good group, in a good faction, maybe these races can even be more profitable for you than the other methods. But I know for a lot of us, that won't be an option. Or, if you're one of those that just likes to explore in the world, it's worth staying flagged up for PvP, even if you just run away whenever there's conflict, because you can randomly get Azos Salt for doing open world activities, so if you're looking for salt, stay flagged up. But that covers the three fastest ways to level your PvP track and get Azos Salt, plus a couple of extra tips. You'll see on screen now a breakdown of all the methods so you can make a decision on which one is best for you. Overall, it looks like spamming 3v3s is the most rewarding method, as long as you keep your win rate above 50%. However, missions is very close in rewards, plus you get a bit of gold from them, faction tokens, and you can do them mindlessly without having to put much effort in. If you're a non-PvP player, this for sure will be the best bet to level some PvP tracks. And then there's Outpost Rush. Although the game mode is pretty fun, and you get a large pool of rewards, you just don't really get enough PvP XP or Azos Salt for it to be a viable grind. Maybe throw one or two of them in from time to time to switch things up, but I would for sure not make it my main focus. But do what makes you happiest, maybe even throw in a couple of influence races or sit on some control points AFK when you need a break. It's going to be a long grind no matter what, so variety will keep things fresh. Let me know if there's a method you're using to grind XP and salt that I didn't mention. And if the video is of any help, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps out massively. But until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching another video. If you'd like to learn about the previously mentioned AFK faction control point method, click on the video to the left. Or if you'd like to learn about the best ways to get Dark Matter currently in New World, click on the video to the right.